Hello, Joe the CRM chap here with a new video in my series all about Microsoft Exam PL400. This is the exam for developers who are looking to validate their skills in building solutions or extending out the Power Platform. So we're we'll continuing our look now at how we can work with plugins and we're going to be uh, uh, seeing how we can uh, potentially debug our plugins as they are running in the platform uh, using uh, one of two mechanisms and the, the focus of the first of this video now is how we can use trace logging to help us um, when debugging. So you know, as with any custom code that we may write, things may go wrong, we may not get the output that we sort of expect and therefore you know, having the ability of being able to log as the plugin sort of you know goes through its various different steps and things like that can be a benefit when we're debugging. And the good thing is that with our plugins we can actually do that. Um, we can use something called the tracing service to be able to write out into um, the Dataverse environment all of the different uh, logs that we may require and it's really quite easy to get started with that. So let's just see how we can uh, take this existing plugin that we built out and incorporate some trace logging into it. So the first thing that I need to do is actually just get a reference to the uh, eye tracing service. Um, um, so I would use code, code sim to this. Um, so this will be something that is available as part of our um, service provider. Um, and typically, you'll always need to make sure that you do this uh, whenever you are sort of initialising your um, your plugin for the first time. So we just want to get a service. Uh, it's going to be of type of uh, i plugin execution context, like so. Uh, and then once we've got a reference to that, we can then start to basically write out into the trace log. And we do this by sort of doing something like you know tracing service dot trace, and then we can just sort of pass in a string value. So we can do something like okay, write your message here, like so. Um, but it might be it might be most typically that we do something like uh, you know tracing um, implemented successfully. Uh, and then from there we can then just start to maybe just add on tracing at various different points in our particular sort of uh, plugin. Um, so let's just do that now. I'm just going to um, add in some curly braces on here because what we can do is maybe put some uh, trace locking just before we throw the error. And again maybe a useful note on there. Um, so maybe do again just repeat that message on there. No tracing found as an example. Uh, down here again we could maybe just uh, return that to the trace log when we think um, when there's no telephone num uh, one field present in our particular um, uh, entity object, so do something like you know telephone. Oh, how I can spell uh, telephone one field not present. Uh, we could also maybe write out these attributes as well. So maybe we just want to confirm, okay, you know what we're getting before and after before we make the change. Um, so to do that, what I could do is something like um, um, uh, telef uh, current telephone number under here. Uh, I can reference sort of properties uh, that, we're, that uh, we want to sort of put into there by doing something like a phone number and then just do a curly braces and the zero number to basically just insert that in. And let's do the same again for our formatted number and again we'll just replace that with formatted telephone number, uh, replace the phone number with formatted like so. Uh, and then finally, just do a final uh, write out to the trace log, maybe just to confirm that we're all done. Okay, so let's just build this plugin. Uh, and then, evidently, we also have to deploy it out again. So let's just uh, right click on the assembly in our plugin registration tool, get the updated DLL, uh, tick the boxes, then just press update selected plugins we can get that uploaded back into Dataverse. So now we'll be able to sort of see trace logging information written out but only if we've enabled um, um, the trace log within our Dataverse environment. So first thing we need to do is just click on the gear icon in the top of our model driven app and then go to advanced settings along the top When we're in there we need to go expand out the settings bit and go to administration uh, and then we want to click on system settings. Then under customization we'll see we've got an option here for enable login uh, to plug in trace log. 
So by default, this will always be off. Uh, and typically, this may be the desired setting that you want to use for your production environments because if you're writing out constantly to the trace log, this will have an impact on your storage. Uh, you could maybe set it to exception. Uh, so that only when an error is thrown do you actually get something in the trace log. So again, that will typically be the most useful um, um, way in which we use the trace log by you know, just uh, leaving that maybe set enabled in production. So typically one of these two settings on here may be okay for production. Uh, for your dev environment, then typically if you are doing dev work and you're just trying to figure out, okay, you know, what's my plugin doing, then the all setting will be the one that you want to set it to. And because this is the dev environment that we're in at the moment, I'll set that like so. Press OK. Uh, and then any trace logging information will then be written out into the plugin trace log option down here. And if we click into there at the moment, we should see we've got an empty view. So all I need to do is just basically trigger the plugin again. Um, so again, I'll just maybe create a new contact for Alice Jones, and we want to put in just another phone number. Maybe maybe this time we want to say that maybe Alice is based in America. So we'll do something maybe a little like this instead. We'll save that. Uh, we've got an error in our code, which is interesting. Uh, okay, I'll be back in two moments while I just get this resolved. Okay, so I noticed the mistake on here, so I'm actually trying to get my plugin execution context and store it in my eye tracing service, so that'll be the reason why that's not working. So let's just get that fixed now very quickly, and then we should be able to re-trigger the create operation. So again, we'll just go through the steps. That's all updated, so now I can effectively try and just trigger that create operation again, and it should complete successfully. Yep, there we go. So now, if you go into the trace log, we should see we have, well, two, um, actually, no, we won't have any at all. We'll just have, to, we'll just have a single one on there for our successful operation, because obviously the first time we ran the code, it couldn't get the tracing service reference, therefore nothing to be written out. So if we go into here, we'll be able to then view the detailed information uh, within the trace log. Um, uh, so actually, in this case, actually, this is the error from before, so it's not going to show anything particularly useful. Uh, so this one here, our second one, will be the one that we want to inspect further. And we can see that it's been able to write out the four different trace messages into the log, and then we're for maybe for debugging purposes, we're able to sort of confirm, okay, here's the number as the user entered it, and here's the final one before it sort of hits the, uh, the data first environment and got saved out. So trace logging is a really useful tool that we can uh, leverage to, um, again, do, maybe do some more advanced debugging, you know, not necessarily have to, um, um, you know, go a bit deeper in terms of trying to figure out what's going wrong. Uh, in some situations, based on the type of plugins that we're writing and the types of uh, assemblies we're deploying out, it may be the only option we've got available to us to be able to debug things. Um, so definitely using the, the trace log effectively, um, you know, in your code uh, will sort of hopefully save you some time and means that you can more easily inspect and get a handle on issues as they arise. So that wraps it up for, to, for this video now. Uh, in the next video, we're going to, as we sort of fi finish looking at plugins, uh, we're going to take a look at the second way in which we can sort of debug our plugins uh, using um, something called the, the plugin profiler. Um, so I'll hopefully see you um, again in that next video shortly. Uh, I hope today's um, this content here has been useful. Um, and yeah, take care. I'll catch you again soon.